Reflecting effectively using the professional development journal. Um, what is useful to consider here is a, a framework that can support the process of writing. Um, a very simple framework um, that we can use is the what, so what and now what model. Um, or in other words, start off writing in the journal by talking about what happened. Or in other words, a description of the event. Um, what was it that um, occurred in the classroom that warranted the reflection? The next uh, frame to write about is so what? Or in other words, what's your reaction to what happened? What's the actual analysis of the event that occurred? What's the analysis and evaluation of the experience um, of teaching on that particular occasion? And then the final part of the framework is the now what? Or in other words, what's the next step? What will you do? What are the actions which will come from your reflection? So it's a very simple framework to use for writing. What, so what, and now what? And what this particular model is good for is that it provides some trigger questions to help the reflective practitioner use this particular framework. So, for example, in uh, describing the occasion, describing the event in the classroom, the reflective practitioner can use what questions, or in other words, what happened, what did I see, what did I do? What did my students do? These are very simple trigger questions for the first part of the frame. Um, they also provide trigger questions for the other components in the framework as well. Or in other words, for so what? These are part of the analysis and evaluation aspect of the reflection. And so the trigger questions need to reflect analysis and evaluation. Or in other words, how did I feel at the time? Um, what were the effects uh, of this particular thing happening? Um, why did I react um, to this particular student in this particular way? Um, this is where the critical reflection uh, has most power. And then the trigger questions for now what, or in other words, the action planning component of the framework. Um, what are the implications of the analysis? And then what are the next steps? For example, it could be how can I modify this aspect of my teaching? So what do you need to think about as a reflective practitioner when you're writing in a professional development journal is the actual layout that you choose. Many people will just treat it as a diary and uh, write a long narrative. If you do this, it might be good for you, um, but it's very easy to actually lose the description, analysis and action planning components. And so uh, a good structure to a professional development journal can actually help the reflection process and actually make reflecting much more effective. Um, what you can do is actually devise yourself a particular template. And the template needs to cover those components of the framework. In other words, what, so what, and now what. The layout could be, for example, a split page. Um, some practitioners will fold a page in half and draw a line down the center. And on the left-hand side, will describe and on the right hand side will analyze and evaluate. Um, what some people will also do is write on two sides, on the left hand side and the right hand side of the book. And so on the left hand side would be the descriptive component. Um, it could be um, very uh, reflective in terms of feelings on the left hand side as well. Certainly it would include date and time and the context. This puts everything into perspective. And on the right hand side, the reflective practitioner is actually undergoing the analysis and evaluation component and actually beginning to 
um, think through the actions that need to be taken in order to develop practice. 